Hi guys, and welcome to the coolest 911 Targa on the planet. Now we all love a barn find, but let me tell you, this is proper stuff. It's a 1972 Targa, and it was originally destined for the Japanese market. So already a very rare car, even for a long bonnet. So the story is, the car was driven in Japan from 1972 right up until we think around about 1988. And then Canford Classics, who own this car now, they think there was a fuel problem. So the car was garaged, and now to all intents and purposes, it has been left as is since. Now, Alan, the owner of Camphor Classics, went over to Japan because he was interested in another car, and then they saw this in the corner. Um, unfortunately, as it turns out, the owner had died, left it to his wife, who didn't really know what to do with it. So, Alan took the car on. But it's a real, real cool story. Firstly, it's a Japanese car, and so it's got some crazy, weird, and wonderful options to it that we've really not seen before. For example, on the Speedo, it's got this kind of red line sweeping around the outside of it. I've never seen that before. It's got a heated front screen. I've never seen that before. Um, it's got a petrol heater as well. A Targa with a petrol heater. It's got these weird Porsche crests just behind the front wheel arches. Really, really bizarre. I've never seen anything like that before. The second thing that's cool about this car then is the fact that it's still completely original. I say completely original. It's had a respray, but other than that, everything else is exactly the same. It's still got the same radio, it's still got the same roof. You're talking a car that is over 40 years old and to all intents and purposes is near enough as original today as it was when it left the factory. Now here's the third thing that's really cool about the car, and to my mind it's the best. This is a 2.4S, so this is a very, very, very sought after car, okay? It has 51K on the clock, 51,000 kilometers, so that's about 36,000 miles, so it's super low mileage, okay? But as I say, the best bit is it hasn't moved since 1988. I'm sitting in it, so what do you think I'm gonna do? Now, before I drive off, I do need to clarify a couple of things. So the engine that's in the car currently isn't the 2.4S engine that came with the car obviously. Alan and his team are currently restoring that back to some sort of usable condition. Uh, again, Alan and his team have had to do a few things to get this car running. It's been sat for a very long time, so it's needed to renew of oil lines, it's needed that fuel pump fixing to begin with, it's needed the brakes C and 2, although I must point out these are still the same discs from 1988, they've just been skimmed, other than that they're good to go. But other than that, the car is pretty much as it was when it was last left in Japan in 1988 incredible now I don't know if you can see there but I'm absolutely sweating buckets with this roof on so it's not raining the roof's coming off right then the roof is dispatched we have open top driving upon us let's go so just to recap then the engine that's actually in this car at the moment and gearbox is from a 2.4 litre 911 T uh, that's another car that Alan and his team at Canfor Classics are restoring and essentially the engine's done about 200 miles and they're just running it in with this car. That is pretty much what they're going to be using this car for in the interim, it's just basically having it as a test bed to help run their restored engines in. Prop cool. Let's go out on the right, shall we? Most of you will know there's quite a difference between a T and an S engine. The T stands for touring and it has nowhere near the same sort of power or urgency as an S engine which stands for sport. So the whole idea for a T really is to just sit back, enjoy the ride, don't hurry the gear changes, take your time. The engine is never going to rev with the same urgency as an S so just don't try and pretend you're an S basically.
this day and age where values of 911s are so sky high, particularly long bonnet cars like this, that's 1964 to 1973, those cars now are so far out of reach in terms of values and that is such a great shame because that means only a very few people can actually afford them and the majority of those people are collectors. Not all of them, some are enthusiasts, don't get me wrong, but the majority are just collectors that have this car as part of a collection. The guys who actually want to own this car for all the right reasons, to drive it and to appreciate it for what it is as a very early 911, they can't get anywhere near these cars. Now the value of these cars means a lot of them are restored and again I've no real problem with that because it kind of prolongs the life of the car. But a lot of these cars are restored to within an inch of their life and they're kind of over restored if you like. Now going back to my point, this car, this car is completely and utterly the antithesis of all those other cars that have been restored. It just genuinely is a complete and utter breath of fresh air to anything else that is going on in the Porsche scene right now. While everybody else is obsessed with paint depths and restorations and keeping the mileages on the cars down so the value keeps sky high, this car is out being driven near daily by its owner and when I ring him up and say can I take it out on a Saturday afternoon drive, slings me the keys and goes out himself. It is magic, absolutely magic. And do you think this car is in a paint depth gauge? I do not think so. So that's the story of the 72 Targa, which is the coolest Targa that's currently rolling our planet. I really hope that Canford leave the Targa as is and just enjoy its patina for now. It's such a cool car, it's so different to everything else out there. And I'm not gonna lie, pretty gutted to be handing it back. You know the drill, subscribe to the channel, plenty of 911 content coming up. Hope you're enjoying what I'm doing so far. Hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. We'll see you soon. So obviously I'm going to be pretty much, oh shit me, that is a huge lorry. Watch the paintwork on my car mate.